Coming up, the WBC Middleweight Championship between the champion Gerald McClellan and former champion Julian Jackson. Standing by at ringside to call the blow-by-blow -blow action are Steve Albert, Ferdy Pacheco, and Bobby Chaz. Steve. Thanks again, Jim. Since Gerald McClellan took the title from Julian Jackson back on May 8th of 93, he has gone out and defended the belt twice. The first defense came August 6th, an easy first-round knockout of Jay Bell in Bayamon, Puerto Rico. Then on March 4th, McClellan made quick work of Gilbert Baptist, a first-round stoppage right here at the MGM Grand. So his last bout, 63 days ago. Exactly the same for two-time world champion Julian Jackson. Jackson has had three tune-up fights since McClellan. Two first-round TKOs over Carlton Haywood and Jaime Montoya. And this past March, he decisioned Eduardo Ayala. Now, Gerald McClellan no longer working with trainer Emmanuel Stewart, who helped guide him to the WBC middleweight throne. He's now with Willie Brown. Will the change in trainers have an effect on the champion? Bobby, your thoughts? A change in trainers that have guided world champions all the way to their titles could be drastically bad emotionally. Will Gerald McClellan trust his new trainer? But after Emmanuel Stewart told us earlier, the trainer is one of his disciples. A little guy that's in the gym with him all the time. A, you know, a, a co-trainer. Yeah. So I don't think it's going to be a problem here. But if he doesn't have what he needs in the corner and things get rough, that could be it. And it's mental. It's not physical. All right. Now, Julian Jackson has had ongoing problems with his hand. Let's get the fight doctor's assessment of that and the possibility of Ferdy of retirement if he should lose. I think the possibility of retirement is very good if he loses, but not because of his hands. He's had multiple eye surgery. Uh, I mean, he's had uh, detached retinas fixed. He's had all kinds of trouble with both hands. He is at the downward turn of his career because his chin is suspect now. So if he got knocked out today, I think he could really realistically look at his, his uh, uh, career and say, that's it, I call it a day. I would not be surprised to see him retire. On the other hand, he's such a warrior, he might continue. On the other hand, nothing's to say that he can't win tonight because this guy can bang. So we've got another one of those 50-50 fights coming up right now. You don't know which one of these two guys going to win. Let's take our first look at the challenger. 33-year-old Julian Jackson from St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. Jackson, the former WBC middleweight champion and former WBA junior middleweight champ, comes in with a record of 49-2 and two with 45 KOs. Julian Jackson, who made five successful defenses of his WBC title before that fifth-round TKO loss to Gerald McClellan last May. That defeat ended a 17-fight winning streak, 16 by knockout. And now here is the champion, 26-year-old Gerald McClellan out of Freeport, Illinois. McClellan, 30-2, and two, 28 knockouts. The two losses early in his career, eight-round decisions to Dennis Milton yeah, and yeah, Ralph Ward, back-to-back yeah. -back in 89. McClellan night, captured night, the WBC night, middleweight title night, almost a year ago to the day, May 8, 1993, with that stunning stoppage of the longtime middleweight champ, Julian Jackson. He owns one of the best knockout ratios in the game, including 19 first-round KOs in 32 fights. Tonight, his third title defense. As we zero in on the particulars, the tail of the tape at 26, Gerald McClellan is seven years younger than Julian Jackson. The inch and a half height advantage for McClellan. Both weighed in at 160. And the four and a half inch reach advantage for McClellan. McClellan down to a three and a half to one favorite. To the rules according to the WBC for this title fight. Ten point must system. Three scoring judges. No standing eight. No three knockdown. Only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the last round. So here at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas, getting ready for the WBC Middleweight Championship, the rematch between Gerald McClellan and Julian Jackson. We go up to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Well, fans, we welcome you to our next world title main event in this Revenge the Rematches, brought to you by Don King Productions and King Vision in association with SET Pay-Per-View, Corona Beer, and the MGM Grand. At this time, we present the rematch for the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. This bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Haiga Collegian, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Dr. Elias Ghana, presenting the judges as appointed, Cindy Barton, Bill Graham, and Dr. James Jenkin. Introducing to you the referee in charge of this bout, Joe Cortez. All right, fans, here we go with the rematch of the explosive bout that took place just one year ago. And this is for the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. 
Introducing to you first the challenger. On my left, he is fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing gold trunks with red trim and hailing from St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. He weighed in at an even 160 pounds, and his record includes 49 wins, only two losses, with 45 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is currently ranked the WBC number two middleweight in the world. Please welcome the knockout artist, who is the former two-time world champion in the junior middleweight and middleweight divisions, introducing uh, Julian the Hawk. Jackson! And his opponent across the ring is the defending champion on my right, fighting out of the red corner. He enters the ring wearing green trunks with white trim, fighting out of Freeport, Illinois. He weighed in at the same weight of an even 160 pounds, and he steps into the ring with a record of 30 wins, only two losses, and he has 28 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his third defense of his title, please welcome the hard-hitting WBC middleweight champion of the world, introducing the G-Man, Gerald McClellan. Once again, here's the referee in charge, Joe Cortez. All right, gentlemen, come in. We went over the rules in the dressing room, but when a good, clean fight, protect yourself at all times. Shake hands, good luck. Gerald McClellan, the only man on this card who had a little trouble making weight, nothing new for the G-Man. He was a quarter pound overweight, went out, came back in an hour, weighed 160, saying afterwards, this is my last fight as a middleweight. He's probably closer to 180 uh, for the fight. A key for Jackson could be to get this fight past the fourth or fifth round. Both McClellan and Jackson average under four rounds. Here we go, round one, scheduled for 12 for the WBC Middleweight Championship. Gerald McClellan with a fifth round knockout over Julian Jackson in the first encounter. McClellan's come out with a real good jab. Oh! Well, no, especially a fast one like that. I mean, you always have the feeling I just got caught. 
I mean, let me go back and try that again. And I, he better never try it again with McClellan because that's going to be the same result over and over again. Gerald McClellan, Ken Buck. You know, if you think I was a little country, uh, Let's take a look at that first knockdown and see what lightning struck Julian Jackson. Whenever I hit him, he was going. All right, there, here's, let's take three looks. I'm going to take the first one, and Bobby's going to do the other two as I go up. There's a punch. That right hand right there. That right hand right there was the quietest. The rest of this is window dressing until he goes down because he is sure taking some punishment here. That's a brutal attack, although he's hitting a lot of gloves and everything. As Bobby says, some of those hurt as well. For well, sure, the repercussions travel through the gloves. Certainly, it's taken away a little bit, but they go through the gloves right into your chin, right into your face. And uh, if it were that easy to just put the gloves up here and say, don't worry about it, knockouts wouldn't happen near as often. That's true. Well, it's certainly a, a, a Julian has taken an awful lot of punishment there. I mean, he, he really actually he didn't go down there. He didn't touch anything. He just but uh, the, mercifully they gave him a count. He should have gone down at, at a certain point anyway. So he didn't get as you'll see in this in this replay. He's just getting unloaded on with everything. Again, he gets lazy with the left hand. Boom. Right hand's on the button. It's clean. Now his legs are a little bit under him now, although they're a little wobbly. But he just needs to go down and take the account. Take the rest and come back to fight. Sometimes that's a smart thing to do. It's difficult for fighters with a lot of pride to do it. I know I've been in, unfortunately, I've been in that situation. I don't want to go down either. Prior to his first fight with Jackson, McClellan toiled for the most part in obscurity, Bobby. The win over Jackson really put him on the map. This win really makes him one of the most devastating fighters in the world today. And some fighters just fight even better as a champion. They rise to the championship status in their performance. And I think Gerald McClellan may very well be one of those people. Now that was just the initial knockdown, the first. Here, the end of the fight. Well, Gerald's a great finisher. He's coming in. He knows that Jackson's hurt. He wants to unload that bomb. Good digs a good shot to the body. Watch this shot on top of the head. He hit him in the body. That hurt him more than we thought. And that shot on top of the head was actually just a not kind of a pile driver to say, make sure you stay there. The heavy handed Julian Jackson putting it to, to the canvas as Gerald McClellan just lowers the boom. Let's get the official time from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 23 seconds in round number one. The winner by way of knockout and still champion, the G-Man, Gerald McClellan. But Gerald McClellan continues his impressive knockout rate. He's 31 and 2 with 29 knockouts. And he got all he wanted to get here against Julian Jackson. No revenge in this fight. So coming up next here at the MGM Grand Garden, the main event, the rematch between Frankie Randall and Julio Cesar Chavez as Chavez tries to regain his WBC Super Lightweight Championship and atone for his only defeat. And here's the man who pulled it off, the only man in history to defeat the mighty Chavez. Frankie Randall making final preparations for the rematch in his dressing room. Randall has held the title for 96 days. You hear the reaction. They're seeing this on the big screen, the Chavez uh, contingency here. Now in just a matter of minutes, he'll look to regain the title he took away, retain it from Chavez. For now, though... We'll go back up into the ring of the fight doctor, Bernie Pacheco. Well, you can't possibly be tired. That's the fastest I've ever seen you work. Well, you know, I work hard, you know, I train hard. I know from my punching power and boxing ability, whenever I hit a guy on the chin with either hand or to the body, he's gonna go, he's gonna be in trouble. Did Julian ever get one shot in that you felt? Well, I got a little bruise in my right eye. I don't know if it was a, a punch or um, his hair, I don't know what it was, but you know, I was too busy trying to you know, get him out of there. I wasn't worried about what he was throwing back. The first shot I threw him with, I knew I had him. The very first shot he hit me with, he was weak. He felt like 147 pounds. Here's, here's what we're looking at the monitor now. You describe it. This is you. Now watch your first right hand. Now watch here. 
That's, now here comes the right hand. Right hand with that first right hand. He was hurt. He had to be hurt. You know, because Gerald McClellan's the hardest puncher out there in boxing. And whoever I hit with those shots will go, will lay down. Don't you think about long about here, this guy had been, been better served to take an eight count and not take all that punishment he was Believe saying. it or not, you know, by him being in the ring so long, he's supposed to be a veteran. And if it was me, you know, with the experience I got, I went down on one knee and got the heat up off me and got up and got my mind together, collected myself and started all over again. None of that tired you out? Well, you know, I was throwing a lot of punches. I was landing a lot. I would lie if I told you I wasn't tired. Whenever you're working hard, you got to be getting tired. If you're not tired, you're not working hard. But you had the confidence that I was going to be over in the first I round. A lot of confidence whenever Gerald McClellan gets a fighter hurt, get him in trouble, not swinging back. He, All he's right. good as dead. One, one last thing. One last thing we've got to talk about is your weight. Your weight, you had to struggle to make it. And this was so successful. Are you going to stay here or are you going to go up? Well, you know, I, I get that to me and Don to talk about that. Uh, you know, well, Don, well, let's talk you know, about it. Don's right here, and Don hasn't said a thing all night. Don. Well, we're going to work at it and see what he want to do. But I tell you right now, I just want to relish in his victory. I want to save you the victory he had tonight. He proved by far he's the best middleweight out there and would challenge any middleweight in the world, super middleweight or middleweight. No so he board. can go all the way down the line, Ferdy. I think we got us a winner right here, and we're going to play him and let him get it ready to go out there and knock our guy. So far, we've had two revenges and one the same yeah. as it was the first time. Now comes the big four. Yeah, he got the big four. Now, it's going to be one great night of boxing. It's been a super show. We had a, a boxing one-on-one -on -one lesson with, with Terry Norris, you know, and so here we got back with the knockout. That just like we, we thought it would be, somebody was going to leave, and it was Julian Jackson, but it was a great fight. Well, let's see what Jim Gray finds out about Julian Jackson's plans. To Jim Gray. Okay, Ferdy, I'm here with Julian. First of all, are you all right? I'm all right, man. No doubt about it. Uh, he caught me with a surprise punch. You know, uh, I felt that I could have still continued. Uh, he caught me a good shot. And, um, you know, I had my faculties and, you know, I guess uh, Cortez felt that I had enough. The big right hand, did you feel he would come out and try and end it real soon with you? Well, I think he would try to jump on me because he realized that, um, you know, the, if the fight go the distance, he would have been in trouble. Uh, he tried to jump on me and uh, he took advantage of it. The referee made a decision and, hey, you know, but uh, I could have continued. Tell the referee that? Uh, definitely. And, uh, you know, the referee, I realized, he know that we are both punchers. And uh, Joe McLennan came out. He know that, uh, you know, if I stayed around, he said, hey, he would try and jump on me and, and, and try and get the referee to stop the fight. Uh, I felt that was okay. I got a good shot, you know, but my faculties were still there. What are your plans now? What will you do? Well, hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a quitter, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I still got a lot left. Um, Joe McLennan, uh, you know, caught me a good punch. Uh, I thought that I would split it, regardless, you know, of the outcome of this fight. But, um, you know, what can I say? You know, uh, I'm a diehard, you know what I'm saying? And um, I just give God the glory and, uh, and, you know, he's Lord of my life. And I believe that uh, Joe McLennan is a, is a big man. He's a strong, you know what I mean? <laughs> this guy is big, a big. I think he's the biggest middleweight out there, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I'm not ashamed. What are you going to do? Who would you fight? What do you want to do with your career? Well, I'm going to tell you the truth. Um, I came down to a, a junior middleweight while I was training. I had to lay off uh, to gain weight. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, I was saying to my people after this fight, um, I'm going to challenge Terry Norris or Simon Brown, whoever wins. You know, uh, because uh, the weight is hard for me to keep uh, middleweight. Uh, I have to eat maybe three times, you know four or five days before the weigh-in just to make the weight. You know, uh, Joe McLennan was strong. So maybe what you're saying is you'll move down to fight a man that you beat, Terry Norris, once before. Definitely. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, we planned it be, uh, even after this fight. Uh, if we win this fight, we were going to challenge the winner of uh, uh, Terry Norris, Simon Brown. Julian, most gracious in defeat, two-time champion. Good luck in the future. Thank you very much. Let's go back to Steve Albert. Thank you very much, uh, Jim. Uh, Julian Jackson, two-time world champion. He told us before the fight, this is the most focused he's ever been for a fight. But it was lights out as Gerald McClellan, 123 of the first round.